Okay. Yes, let's let's start. So uh, welcome everyone, wherever you are, wherever you're joining, from wherever, which country you're joining. Joining, I'm happy to kind of host this webinar together with my with Ashmita. Ashmita, um, and this will be about a really important topic about about how we can kind of uh, leverage the. Yeah, I work one in the companies. Companies. My name is Riku. I'm the founder and CEO of Seppo. And and uh, maybe we start with short, short introductions, or maybe before that, let's have some house rules. So everybody, if you wish, so please feel to introduce yourself in the chat, chat so and uh, your name and where you are joining. Joining. Uh, it would be nice to see where people are coming in, and then. Uh, if you want to kind of uh, we will leave some room for the questions in the end so you can raise your hand or and or of course feel free to comment on the chat if you have questions coming up uh during the webinar during the, our discussion so feel free to free to kind of write them down in the chat or if you want to share us like uh uh giving us some th thumbs up or anything else so feel free to do do that during the webinar when we are discussing with ashmita i'm really happy happy that you are joining you're spending the about 45 minutes to one hour with us with us and, and uh ashmita are we ready to go yes i am Riku. yes great to be here today and great to have our guest i see we have a very international uh pool of guests uh, today so really great to see i see brazil finland uh, um, my fellow country people from netherlands hi all <laughs> so great to be here okay yes definitely that's really good hey uh let's start with the, some introduction introduction so my name is Riku. As, as i told you i'm the founder and ceo of seppo seppo and i will be more like kind of uh, hosting the the webinar together with with asmita 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 you're kind of the you're the expert on the, on the content, but I, I will be also happy happy to share my my opinions and insights about gamification and how we can help uh, help people from uh, from uh, different different positions. Uh, vision of gamification. Uh, I was still teaching in one of the upper secondary schools here in Helsinki when I got the idea of kind of implementing or introducing gamification to be part of, of a kind of a serious learning situation. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, I founded the company. Company, and uh, we have a solution, a, a, a gamification tool for anybody who has a kind of a training need to turn their existing materials into gamified learning experience. So I will be talking in the end of the of the of the webinar a bit more about why and how we see the gamification part. But my my vision on on the kind of the D D and I. Uh, so I think it's kind of a pragmatic. As I'm running a company, we are all together about 17, 18 people globally. So people are coming coming in from different backgrounds and, and like also from different cultures. And, and, and we have a quite variety of, of people uh, in different different cultures. So uh, we are facing the kind of the different cultures and different kind of uh, approaches to the same topics every day. And it has been really, really kind of uh, fruitful for me to also learn how to deal with different people from different cultures cultures and, and a message for the day i think that okay uh kind of a sustainable work sustainability work and kind of working in the in the in the today's topics like diversity equity and inclusion it's somehow a bit difficult for some people but i think that uh, my message is that okay by implementing new ways of teaching and learning and kind of implementing new ideas it's also engaging and fun uh, how we can keep the positive atmosphere i think that's kind of the my approach to this session but maybe over to you ashmita thank you uh Riku. and uh, again uh, a warm welcome as well to everyone here in the webinar we very much look forward to provide you an engaging experience today um, as Rico mentioned, my name is Ashmita Krishna Sharma, and I am an entrepreneur just as Riku. But uh, my company, Sparkling Gems, is a bit smaller, even though we are a networking organization working with, with uh, several other DI practitioners in, in uh, different uh, fields in DI. And so when it comes to DI, so for the ones that don't know, DI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. 
Um, if I look at my personal vision from Sparkling Gems, it is our mission to help organizations creating an inclusive workflow. But what we've also seen over the years is that there are some struggles or some challenges getting you there. So what works, right? So basically, that is one of the main questions for this webinar. What is it actually that can create excitement and that can bring more people on the journey on DI based on shared values and inspiration instead of you should or you must? And this is also what brought me to gamification because of the benefits which I saw with it, but also from some personal uh, point of view, um, so I have been gaming myself quite a bit when I was a bit younger, I would say. And um, having experience in myself, I also see the benefits of it, which we're going to share with you later on today. And my piece will be mainly around what are some of the challenges we see? What is it that the gamification can bring for diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives? And hoping to have um, a nice dialogue with as much as many of you as possible. And again, feel free to also leave questions or remarks in the chat. Yes, uh, you mentioned really important kind of uh, word like uh, like uh, excitement. So let's let's hope that okay after this session, people are excited to kind of uh, to uh, to move forward with their everyday work with the DNI I, uh, in their organizations. And uh, I'm really happy that okay if we, we are able after the session, people are more kind of uh, capable of understanding what gamification can bring to the table. But if we take a kind of a quick look on, on, the, on the agenda, what is the problem? Okay, why gamification in the DNI and the kind of the proof of the budding, uh, budding of course, and, and then like the questions and answers and, and how to move forward. So I think that this is the this is kind of the, the agenda for the for the meeting and, and let's leave room for the for the questions as well. But before before going to the actual kind of a topic, I would say I would like to go open a bit the kind of the broader picture. I have been trying to learn now during this year kind of a why companies, why is the ESG a really big topic topic for the for the companies of different sizes? Why are companies acting on the sustainable topics? Uh, there are kind of three things like E it comes from the environment. S comes from the social, and then the governance is the G part of the of the big change that is paradigm shift shift that is happening at the moment. Uh, for the E part, for the environmental part, everybody knows that okay, and the climate change is it's coming a big problem. It is a big big problem currently now. Now, so the kind uh, kind of um, companies are acting. Uh, to prohibit the kind of the climate change and the kind of uh, the people are uh, companies and everybody is concerned about the by di uh, di diversity and the carbon footprints. They are they are topics that are on, on every company's radar. So uh, how we can keep the environment safe, but also kind of uh, uh, for for people to live in different parts of the world. Why environmental things are really important is that okay, there's a big kind of a, a taxonomy coming from the EU, and also you, kind of European Union is regulating companies to move accordingly. They have some kind of a international standards the companies need to follow. If companies want to have investments, uh, they need to follow the guidelines from the from the European Union and other kind of officials. And that is kind of a clear that okay, people, uh, companies need to act accordingly. But Ashmita, what do you think? Why is the kind of the, why is the DNI uh, an accurate topic for the, for the companies to act? Yeah, Rick, that's, um, that's a very good question. It's also quite uh, very dependent on the company. So what I see in my work is that it really differs. Some companies want to invest in DI because there is a demand from customers or from their employees. Um, also, we have, uh, and I think this is this is a worldwide thing or a worldwide thing, I should even say, um, the labor market is very tight. So also to appeal to people with different backgrounds, you have to be more aware what it means to deal with differences between the employees in your organization. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, we have a new generation that is preparing itself to come to the labor market, Generation Z. And they think it's very important that, you know, that organizations are being accountable on, for instance, um, the gender balance in the board of directors or what it is that they do to work on inclusion. Yes, I, I agree that also we have also experienced that, okay, when, when we are doing the new recruitment, so people are always asking that, hey, what is your kind of, uh, what is your approach towards the kind of DNI and, and also for the environmental topics? And then, like, if we move forward to the governance part, people are expecting, everybody's expecting about the transparency in the leadership and also kind of uh, about the, the quality of gender, for example, in the, in the leadership. But this is a this is a really important topic, and I think that it's really getting more and more important in the becoming years, years, and and when we move forward. I pick this kind of uh, this um, this maturity model from a, from a uh, one big company's company's presentation, and this kind of describes that okay, companies are on the different stages uh, on their way to be a transformative organizations. Uh, and some companies are still in the very beginning of their journey, their journey, and some companies are in the transformative part already. Uh, but this is, it's not an easy, easy kind of a road to take and, and uh, or road to walk, walk. But actually, I think that this is what we will, dis will we be discussing in the, in the becoming minutes is about the, okay, how gamification could be, could be help in this, in the, to to make the big change happening happening inside the organizations. Ashmita, is there? Do you can give any kind of your takeaways from your experience? That, okay, in which uh, status are the companies currently in related to the DNI? Mm -hmm. Yes. Also here, Riku, um, it really depends. Uh, what I would say is that I do think that in the public sector, for instance, which has of course um, also quite um, an, an, an example function in society. So you see that a lot of governmental agencies, uh, municipalities are investing in diversity, act and inclusion, and they would, so they would be going more towards the proactive or strategic side. But there's, as you mentioned yourself as well, there's also a lot of companies which are perhaps still in the passive stage. I see that mostly um, with the smaller companies, so 25 employees or less, basically. And uh, the biggest change I would see, uh, say is that you see after the murder on George Floyd, which was in May 2020, you see a big change uh, where a lot of companies became more aware of these, these um, also this role, the role of the organization that they have from a social perspective and more organizations have moved towards the more proactive stage where they are thinking about, uh, for instance, employee resource groups, or they think about mentorships or DI programs. And this is especially also the field of proactive, at least from my perspective, where the gamification part can become very interesting. Mm. With the, with, in this, with the whole thing, like we want to improve the kind of the working culture and uh, the organization. So it's a kind of a positive change that we want to apply apply so on uh, this is kind of the this is the thing that we will be discussing but maybe we can kind of clarify with what we mean by diversity equity and inclusion ashmita can you give us kind of a short short introduction for the for the for the terms that we know that what we are discussing about yeah it's um it's a lot of text on the slide i will try to to bring it crisp and uh, uh, and hopefully clear um so diversity basically all of us are diverse right so it's about the differences between us and that can be but are not limited to ethnicity gender social economic status place of the world we're living in so basically diversity you could say is a kind of quantitative measure. Then for now, I'll skip equity. I come to that later and I go to inclusion. So inclusion is looking at this mix of different people with different features. How well do you feel accepted and welcomed in a certain environment? So for instance, the workplace. And um, inclusion is about embracing these different perspectives. So for instance, celebrating different um, um, different holidays from different religions, to give an example. Now, equity is about um, 
being aware that not everyone had the same starting point in life. And you also see in the organizations that work on DI, the ones that are the furthest be, are, are more working towards equity. So I would say that equity is definitely a part for transformative stage. Mm. And it's really about creating equal opportunities. But equal opportunity means that you have to treat people differently because you are actually aware that everyone has a different starting point. But if we, if we want to let everyone's talent flourish and we want to create equal opportunity, it means that you have to put a step extra. Uh, I know that you have been this kind of mentioning about, about, about positive intervention, but is there a right way to kind of start the DNI work in in the organization? What would be a good good uh, way to start? And I know that okay, uh, organizations are running the campaigns, but sometimes they are not successful. Mm -hmm. Successful. What is your uh, takeaway on this one? Yes. So um, by research done by Harvard, which they have actually done quite some extensive research on DI, DI programs, what works and what doesn't work. And um, so some of the reasons why DI programs fail is, first of all, and you especially see this actually in larger companies, is that there is quite a lot of emphasis on compliance. So everyone has to do the same program. Everyone has to do the same workshops or the same e-learning. And um, it's almost like you could say like comply or suffer. So it creates, it can create some daily day fatigue for some. Um, second of all is a lack of uh, autonomy because I don't know about you, Riku, but um, I don't really like to be told how I should think, what I should do. And I think that's, that accounts for a lot of people. So people would like to have this feeling that, you know, that they are in the driver's seat. Mm. And then thirdly, it's about limited budget. So, um, and I have to say that sometimes this, 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 yeah, this is uh, something um, I can really relate to. And I think a lot of DI experts can. It's um, you, you get into a conversation with a client, but they really expect miracles from this very limited budget and it's just not possible. It's just like, for instance, your sales plan, it's, it's, it's a business goal, which means that it also needs sufficient funds and means in order to get there. And um, so these, according to the research by Harvard, are three of the, the factors that, that uh, contribute to failing DI programs. But I have two bonus ones, actually more, uh, because also very important is uh, to have the leadership support. So to have a sponsor, for instance, in the management team, mm -hmm. and uh, who really is a role model and also shares the vision on why this is an important topic. And the, the last bonus uh, one is um, a lack of metrics. So if you're not really knowing where you're going and if what you're doing is really creating indeed extra value on the inclusion part, you don't really know if what you're doing is effective. So yes, that's, this, this, this is a part of why most DI programs fail. Uh, this is out of out of the blue we didn't discuss kind of uh, early on but i was i was participating in discussion maybe last week so there were kind of uh, uh, uh hr professionals uh from different companies and and they were from finland actually they were discussing that the, the still the most kind of the difficult case is between the kind of the equity equality of, of genders uh is this the still, still the same like from your perspective or are some kind of uh, some other topics getting more and more relevant in, in, in the DNI work. I think this is very relatable as well for in the Netherlands, where there is also an understanding that there is a lack of equity when it comes to gender, uh, but not just gender. Um, if you look at it from an intersectional perspective, so for instance, women of color or women with a handicap, I would definitely say that there is a lack of awareness on that field as well. Okay. Okay, but then actually you mentioned also a really important thing that, okay, uh, we, we would like to take the people to the driver's seats. You want to have the autonomy. That's what we also want to do with gamification. But let's move to the kind of a success part. So uh, what, are, what, are the, what are the three E's that you, you are relating to the kind of a gamified learning, uh, gamified kind of a DNI work? What do you mean by that? What can, what can gamification bring to the table in, in the DIA work? 
So, so what Harvard says, at least when it comes to these failing DI programs and what they think based on their research that could really help is the three E's. So it's engagement, exposure, and encouragement. And um, engagement creates excitement. Engagement creates motivation. It creates activation. So put that towards a mindset of where someone is telling you a message, but you're not ready or not um or not in a kind of, of, of position that you really want to listen. So basically, because you are involved and basically you're part of the learning process, engagement really works when it comes to taking people towards these shared values when it comes to inclusion. The second one is exposure. And this is about exposure to people who look different than you and that can be a different walk of life it can be a different socioeconomic status can be different country can be different gender so we know from research done by harvard that it really helps to have this exposure to different kinds of people and the third one is the encouragement so basically to be to feel involved and to feel that this is also about you and there is also something that you can contribute in this field Okay, interesting, interesting. And I was thinking like, uh, we can run a DNI project in the company or in the organization, but like, okay, DNI can be included in some other kind of a, uh, um, a, other uh, topics or without kind of a, having a special DNI project, like uh, um, inclusion and diversity can be also implemented when people, companies are recruiting new employees, for example. Mm -hmm. onboarding process so it's not kind of a, we don't have necessarily have a a specific dni i process to kind of increase the inclusivity of the workplace but how do you see that okay how uh kind of a inclusive uh recruitment works for the companies mm -hmm. um yeah so when it comes to inclusive recruitment um you now see for instance different companies who are already investing in gamified um, applications mm. so yeah. that's i think uh, a good uh, example um but also i think and i think that's what we're going to do right now right i i really believe that uh, in order to see and to feel how it works that it's always really great to experience it yourself so i'm very curious riku what are we going to see today <laughs> Yeah, okay, good, good. And, and actually what we have done, we have also gamified the recruitment process and, and kind of created a safe place for different people to join into the, the narrative and try them at, okay, how gamification works, because I think it's really important then you are taking account as a whole person, person, not just kind of giving, taking a look on the on the marks and your kind of qualifications. But hey, in, at this time, let's, let's jump into a game game and uh everybody who has their phone with it there with you so feel free to scan the qr code it's about uh, just a small demo about the actual platform and it's uh, the the content is related to the dna your experience on the daa dna and and feel free to log in log in and and uh, also participate participate by your answers or comments uh in the game uh, that is uh we are now uh asking you to join so uh scan the qr code with your camera in the phone or use the pin code go to play that separate at io and then kind of use the use the pin code to log into the game uh, it's a short one so you can you can play the game during our discussion with asmita asmita uh, i'll just keep the one the qr code there for for a short check and then then let's move forward so this is an example about how how the SEPA platform can be used for different topics topics and now this is an example of the dni dni so mm -hmm. please somebody maybe Riga, you can pick the 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 kind of a pin code uh, and and share it with them in the in the it's chat, in the so chat. The, the address okay, is great. in the chat and the pin is there thank you thank you so, but if we move forward, uh, the, the clear benefits of gamification in the DN, DNI work. So, Asmita, uh, you have been running the gamified, gamified, gamified projects uh, with your clients. So, how do you see the concrete benefits about of using gamification in the in the DNI projects? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, but I've been using, of course, Sepho, <laughs> the Sepho right. games. So what I do is that uh, after, uh, before I have a workshop, I send in the game to them beforehand so they can already have a flavor of what it is and they have a safe environment to really experience DI. It really helps as well to create a basic understanding of diversity, equity and inclusion. So. Um, the engagement, you know, you get points, you can uh, you can go through different levels. Um, it creates excitement. So I, I, I see that most of the time people um, get happy and excited when they are playing. And because they are then in this positive vibe, as you could call it, they also tend to be more empathetic toward different points of view, which you can then also put into the game. Um, another thing is that because gaming or gamification creates emotions, it is something that lasts longer with us than, let's say, a two-hour workshop. Um, in addition to that, uh, if you have a gamified platform, you can reuse it. You can play the game again after a couple of months. Uh, you can use it, like you mentioned yourself, for your onboarding system. So in that sense, it extends the transfer of knowledge, which definitely is a benefit in this way. Well, motivation, we've already discussed that uh, quite a bit. Um, but also very importantly is that it has the uh, ability to reduce bias because some of the feedback I got from some of my customers is that they said to me, well, you know, there were some cases in this game I never thought about or I never looked at it from that perspective. And it really made me more aware. It really helped me reflect more about the stereotypes I have, for instance, towards people who do not look like me, to give an example. And you can also, and especially the Sepho games, I believe, but we're going to hear more later about that later. Um, it, it's, a, it's a bit of team building as well, because you can also play the games in little groups. You can have discussions afterwards with each other. For instance, the dilemmas you faced and then have a conversation. So that also then increases the inclusion of the different perspectives and um, having a conversation with each other about what does it mean for you personally. So there's the kind of the personal personal touch touch. So so when you mentioned about kind of uh, how gamification helps in in the DNI, so I think that it relates some some other things as we what we have been doing, like like uh, how Sepo has been used in 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 corporations or, or in in adult organizations. Is that okay? Almost anything can be kind of gamified to turn it into an interactive learning experience. I think that it like. If you would use this as a as a kind of a two-hour teams or slideshow, so everybody would get bored. Bored, but when you are invited to take part on the on the learning process, so or kind of a change process, so then you are much more involved. Like, and if you if you are, if you are using the narrative, for example, how Seppo has been used in in different per for different purposes. It's kind of a training and mentoring, recruitment, talent management, new employee onboarding, kind of a implementing micro stories just like you asked me mentioned that okay it helps people to see some other people in different different perspectives or different have different appro approaches so i think it's really good in that also for the safety training safety trainings compliance strategy and value implementation and nowadays we have been quite much work with the kind of the environmental environmental topics like how the companies are changing their behavior or how the employees are changing their behavior in, in, in terms of the environmental choices that we can make inside the company. Company and then, of course, well-being, team building. Especially, I really want, want to encourage people to kind of have the, the playing in teams because then they people can share their thoughts. In a, all, again, I mentioned the kind of the safe environment. But then again, if going to the sales sales uh, sales training as well, like it's kind of a tough to kind of how to reach your goals. So so that's different topics can be gamified, gamified, and I think that Zeppo is a great great tool for that. Uh, we do have some some different uh, exercise types available in in Zeppo, like. Uh, different open-ended questions are really good where you need to kind of uh, 
learn the soft skills and leadership when uh, for example those you can have short video clips and people need to take kind of uh, uh, take a look that okay how how would i re react on this this situation and make an answer with a short video clip about how your would how you would solve this problem for example or then it can be kind of a fully uh, a single player game with automated feedback feedback but uh Asmita, do you have any any kind of uh, suggestions what kind of exercise types are really good for the dni work for example mm -hmm. so um the the, the game uh, i made uh, with Seppo for last year was an inclusion game about different kind of stereotyping that you could find on the work floor so basically working on unconscious bias so that is one that uh, that works well at least in the platform you uh, Seppo are providing because it's kind of like and people are experiencing it right now right you you can walk to a board can be 3d board or it can be like um with different levels or it can be like a picture and where you have different exercises and um, I think the most topics where it comes to creating an understanding for the perspective of someone else, those are the kind of topics that can be very well gamified. Mm. But as you also mentioned on the previous slide, there are so many topics. It's onboarding, it's recruitment, it's uh, unconscious bias, it's inclusive leadership, it's social safety. Um, basically i would say most topics mm -hmm. but i do think though that um even though you can give up find most uh, topic it's still very important to keep um also when you know designing the game and but i'm sure you're going to tell us more about that later and mm -hmm. um having the game there it's still important to also think about the principles of inclusive design so yes of course we have the content the content di base but also how are we going to design if you have a company worldwide you have different kind of local languages also think about can i include those local languages then in different versions of my game for instance and then uh, one thing where i have not found a solution for other than offline play is that um we live in a very digitalized world so i assume i think that gamification ai is only to become more and more bigger and more present in our lives but it's not that logical for everyone um to be very savvy like digital savvy and um from that perspective i do think it's also to 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 stay alert on that one as well from from an in digital design inclusive perspective yeah, well, that is true. So, and, and what as I have a teacher background, so so I, of course there are different people in 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 the classroom as well. So you need to take an out, account everybody and uh, what are what are the kind of a learning learning uh, styles as well. So you you need to design if you want to include everybody into the game and offer them a le positive learning experience. So you need to have kind of a diverse diverse set of exercises there and an answering options as well. When we talk about the gamification, so uh, in Seppo, the whole product has been built on on the on the kind of principles of how game mechanics uh, enhance the learning. So there, there are different different game features available, and you can implement as many as you wish. But I will just maybe just quickly go through some of the pick some of those of the things in from the list. Like advancement is really important. I think that okay. In some of the trainings that are provided, so there are kind of exercises or tasks coming after one and another, so that you don't see the progress. I think that kind of by using gamification and game mechanics, like uh, like having different levels and and uh, kind of there's an, always an end goal where you are where you are reaching out. So you we visualize the the progress as well, and I think that it's one of the most most uh, powerful gamification uh, tools is the kind of the the visualizing the progress uh, and and you are getting more demanding a uh, task when you are moving to the next level so it's really rewarding that okay you see that okay uh, you are you are getting closer to the end or the, the goal and then we discussed already before the autonomy the freedom you can do do individual choices inside the game you have the authority to to see to see, to decide where where to go next and I think that, like the feedback with Seppo games, you can create a fully standalone game, or then there can be an individual person giving you online feedback when there are, when you are sending the answer. Uh, so it's a kind of a human touch. Uh, so the people are the game is 
is allowing people to discuss uh, things in, in, a, in a safe way, but then also there's somebody giving you online feedback and kind of a commenting on your, your insights about the topic. And then uh, we can uh, can deny that okay, people are quite competitive. So if you want to have a competition in play in, in in place, so that is doable. People want to see the scoreboard. Or how did I do with the compared to the other ones? It's natural, natural, and I think that it's it's a really powerful tool, gamification tool as well. But always, actually, the surprise. It's a nice thing. You never know what is what is behind the corner corner and that's part of the kind of the human touch as well so something might might happen and kind of a take a have a have a have a su surprising thing uh coming up suddenly so and, uh and actually the uh yes. what i wanted to uh, add here as well because i think it's a nice bridge so on the field of competition out of research what we also um what i also read is that People who are more skeptic, for instance, about the value or they cannot really relate to diversity, equity, inclusion because they do have a different life experience. Once you can bring them in with the competitive element, which is an external stimulus, it mm. helps them to get to the internal stimulus of the shared values and the empathetic um, capacity. So also from that perspective, the competition, even though it might sound like an external element, is actually very interesting for DI. Yeah. And what is really important when we got, when we talk about when we start to build the game for different different purposes that okay the learning outcomes what do you want to teach with the game what do you want people to learn learn when they are playing the game so uh, when you when you start designing the game game you can think of okay is it just the knowledge that we want to kind of uh, 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 to teach in the game, increase the knowledge of the employees or the participants, or do we want do we want to kind of uh, teach them skills, how to cope with different cultures, for example, how to de how to deal with different people, how to communicate in a, in a, in the right way, or then if it's something that we want to kind of uh, uh, if we want to change the people kind of. Uh, thinking about about how to deal with with other cultures so they're kind of a knowledge or they can be the skills or they can be the feelings of how we want to kind of uh, what are the main topics of the of the game so uh and then ac accordingly we need to design the the exercises what we have a kind of a discussed internally with sepo is that okay what is our sweet spot for which kind of uh, uh learning purposes sepo works the best and definitely, I think that okay, kind of a, those uh, projects where people need to be applying the information, the theory into practice, or something that okay, they need to re reflect on on the kind of the big change that is happening, how it's reflecting my work. So um, when we create the narrative in a, in a, in the right way, so we can encourage people to reflect bravely on, on the on the topic topic and, and and then when they can express their uh, their their um the learnings in a nice way but like doing a video or doing a audio recording if we're playing a team so these these are how we see that okay we need to be changing the behavior or the company culture that's kind of the best way how to use sepo and i i really believe that okay uh, these kind of things is really important in the dni work as well or don't you agree or do you agree Ashmita? yeah so uh I, I realized we haven't actually shared the story with the audience uh how how we got in uh in a partnership sepo and sparkling gem so it's a funny story so uh, last year i was giving a workshop on uh, unconscious biases in recruitment processes and sepo happened to be at the fair so there was a fair there and this was a gamified experience where you can where you could like visit the different stands and then do some exercises and this is also how i got to experience from um, a first-hand perspective what actually the benefits are of gamification but also how well it works because i met new people i had a new team to work with uh, on the spot over there and um I, I, I really saw there the benefits of gamification from a different perspective because I used to know the 
the benefits of gamification through my experience as a gamer, which I've been doing since the age of eight. <laughs> but this was a different perspective where I thought, wow, you know, these are the kind of things that we can really bring in as well into our professional life and mm. in a way that, you know, we can play, learn and grow with each other together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's re really well put. So, so kind of a game facilitates us to kind of learn as human being and, and also kind of a team players. So I think it's really important. Uh, Asmita, you mentioned that already uh, that you have been you have been running kind of uh, gamified workshops and projects. So uh, I know that you created a game game uh, that is available in English and also in Dutch. Dutch. So, but. Uh, Tell me about how you work with your or your clients and, and uh, together with the gamification part. Yeah, so this one, uh, the first day of the game, I would invite everyone to uh, to play it. Uh, uh, for the ones, and I know some people might have played the Dutch version. This is the English version of the first day of the game, where you will have ten real life scenarios that could also that you could also encounter on your own work floor, and it provides you with a safe environment to think about these challenges. And uh, so working with clients, so they can, if they want to, of course, they can ask for a tailored experience for their organization. Because what some of what, one of the things which I really like about uh, the Seppo software is that it's very simple. And that is great because, you know, life already gives a lot of options. So sometimes it's so nice, just like the Apple philosophy is something is simple. And um, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of the options you have is to make like a 360 um, image of your office and then you know it brings it closer to to the employees as well because one of the things what is very important in this gamified learning is that the examples are relatable so if the examples are totally different from your work environment or the people you work with or the things you encounter on the work floor then then it, it's still fun but you know it, it it doesn't really click so in order to make it click it has to be relevant in order to be relevant you have to be aware as well about what are the issues on inclusion or on diversity or our equity that are happening on my work floor what are the kind of cases that when i look at my strategy or my di goals that i really want to work on so apart from the gamification experience it's very important as well to spend attention on what it is that you want to work on how you're going to get there how gamification is going to help you and the kind of metrics you are going to measure to see if you are getting there where you want to be so why not it's our world kind of help you uh, everybody who is interested to kind of get started and build the game so our production team and uh, together with with Ashmita can help kind of uh, uh to get all the gamification features in place place and, and uh, make sure that okay the user experience is excellent excellent uh wherever the people are joining the game because you can create a worldwide game from and uh, I, there has been a kind of a big corporations global co global companies playing the same game and joining the game from from their branch offices in different continents for example so it's an easy easy way to deliver and also kind of a build the build the company culture uh let's take a look so before going to the answers questions and answers section maybe uh santeri uh hopefully you're there and i ask you to kind of have a quick look on the on the demo game that we had there so uh can you share some of the some of the answers that we had on the game about about what are for example what are the obstacles uh, that people are having in running the dni projects or then also kind of the uh what people are aiming uh to achieve by using the gamification have you had a chance to kind of take a look on the answers hello there good afternoon um yeah i had a quick uh, glance on on the uh, answers in the game um there was a really big uh, variety what people thought but uh, i think the biggest thing in the challenges part is almost everyone mentioned limited budget so i think that also then translates to what some people also mentioned in the open field that there's not enough awareness not enough prioritization um, not enough interest so those that, that is basically the round down that what many people mentioned in the game that that's uh, inhibiting to uh, implement these uh, 
D, E, and I topics in the company. Okay, uh, and what about the kind of uh, what people are uh, looking to achieve in the with the game? Were there some answers on that? So, uh, so since it? the question was worded so that uh, regarding what would be the benefit of using gamification, so most of people mentioned what what kind of things they would like to use the gamification. So. There was a lot of things about onboarding and and uh, using the different kind of topics uh, the gamification there was uh, some also mentioned that uh, gamification is a way to make it a bit more simpler uh, more easy to approach so that would make it uh, also more lucrative to uh, employees to get uh, get to know these topics okay good thanks and uh, so i think that would be good to kind of uh, open the open the floor for the for the questions or comments so anybody do you want to have a a a question uh, or either to ashmita or my team at seppo seppo feel free to kind of uh, ask and uh, or comment something maybe yeah Riku, some people want to share how they how they experience playing the game i'm also quite curious uh, about that Yes, feel free to kind of comment on that as well. If there aren't any, actually, one while you are still uh, maybe thinking a bit, so maybe I can share my screen again and just give you a quick look on the on the kind of the. Ashmita mentioned that okay, uh, this Zeppo is really easy to use tool for for anybody who would kind of uh, turn your existing materials into game games. So this is the kind of the dashboard view uh, of of my games. Some of there, there's a kind of a sustainability challenge that we we created a game for that, and this is kind of the. Uh, the game that we created for this purpose it's uh, it's built on an image image so we do have some game templates game board templates available there but you can also create a, a kind of a, the game on the live map or you can use the 360 images if you want to kind of would want to create a game kind of escape room type of game for example so there are different options available well, above this game was built on an image. The image, as I mentioned, so when it's kind of a learning path, and and uh, building exercises is really easy. Easy, just kind of uh, using the button buttons on the left hand side. Uh, we discussed with earlier with Ashmi that okay, what kind of exercise types work good for the different purposes? Like open-ended questions are really good if you want to ask people's opinions or kind of uh, how to develop something, how to reflect on this topic. But of course, there are questions like multiple choice exercises or, or checkbox exercises, missing word and matching matching pairs exercises that are really have kind of automated feedback given given them. So. Uh, you can use different different exercise types to make the kind of also something for the different kind of types of learners learners and then people can communicate together uh, inside inside the game they can have an open chat chat and discuss about the uh, uh, different uh, different themes inside how they are doing in the game uh, you can Bring any digital background material on, on the on the exercises, like having a YouTube video as a background material, on image as a background material, or audio files. I think that in the DNI work, it's really good to kind of use micro stories about the kind of the different different cases cases in in, in the work actual working life, and it, it's it brings so much concrete to the to the game content as well, and then. I noticed that okay on the on the right hand side there are some an answers that are not yet kind of uh, uh, giving feedback. So just just uh, the teacher or the instructor can give on our feedback for the players in the open ended questions. Questions just quickly go through some of the some of the things that way if you want to kind of manually give feedback. So it's good to kind of uh, take a look on the on the on the on the answer and then just giving kind of a online feedback pretty personalized feedback for the for the players so the same tool works for thousands of employees or if you have a, a people of 10 or 20 people so you can really give them a personalized 
learning experience by by doing it with Seppo. Maybe maybe to conclude the conclude the session is that maybe uh, Asmita three things from your end from your experience how gamification can help in DNI work and then also my my kind of a comments on to to end this session. Yes, well, I was listening actually closely to Santidi when he was uh, sharing the feedback on the game because I think it's very interesting to relate to to see what is it that the participants, our guests here today, are actually encountering. So, uh, limited budget, I think, was the number one. Well, that's very relatable. And um, what also was shared is that it's not enough awareness, prioritization, and interest. And I think gamification can really help in that sense because it does help indeed getting the awareness there. It does help in motivation and it does help in um, the awareness part. So from that perspective, I would say that um, while the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, right? So it's great indeed to really use gamification also to make a stronger case for the need of working on DI in your organization. And I continue like having my uh, uh, some of my points that is there. Okay, if you compare SEPO or gamification uh, to a traditional e-learning where you watch a video and then just kind of uh, move to the next one, uh, if there's a call to action embedded, so you need to take part in the learning experience, it it, it becomes much more powerful. Uh, taking a look on the PowerPoint presentation, it's pretty easy easy way to do it. But if after the while after the that you don't remember anything. If the best part of gamification is that, okay, the learners are in the center, you need to be active. And when you are active, you are learning much more, no matter what is the content. And I believe that, okay, in the DNI work, gamification really works because uh, it gives room people to reflect on the big change that is, that is needed to do to make the kind of workplace better as well. So, Thank you everyone uh, for taking part on this. And like, uh, if you want to have more information, information, please contact either Ashmita or myself. We are happy to help and uh, you and your organization kind of implement gamification in the DNI work. Thank you so much. And, and I wish you all a nice summer. And thank you Ashmita for, for, uh, for your valuable insights on the, on the, on the subject. Thank you, Rico. Thank you, Sapo team. It was great uh, working together on this one. And it was also mentioned uh, I've written a white paper for Sapo actually on the topic of gamification and DI. It will be shared with you later. Um, and, and instructions on how to get it will be shared later on as well. It was great to have you all here today and wishing everyone a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye.